I have been hopeful from the beginning. I looked at my son and I knew that I couldn't let him down. And so I started to make goals. My first goal was to get through my surgeries. And my second goal was a longer term goal, which was to see my son go to kindergarten. When you first hear you have cancer, the first emotion you probably feel is complete and utter shock. Disbelief, maybe some anger, confusion, and you wonder what your life will be like now. Things may sound like or feel like tunnel vision when you first hear you have cancer. And not only you might feel that, but your loved ones who are with you might feel that as well. This feeling starts to fade as you start to gather information and know more about your disease and the treatments that lie ahead. It's really important to ask for help before you get to a place where you're feeling really alone and scared. There are some great resources out there to help you. Cancer and its treatments can impact not only you, but all of your relationships as well. Whether you're single, in a partnership, or have children or grandchildren that are trying to figure this out with you. The most important thing that you can do is talk to your friends and family about what you need. So you're going to have to be really direct with them about what it is that you need and what they could do to help you through this. If you're single and you're not yet partnered and you're wondering how in the world will I ever date after this or how will I talk about my cancer diagnosis with someone? Be prepared to answer questions on any of the questions they may have about how, cancer, how the cancer experience was for you. The more prepared and educated you sound, the more at ease that person is going to feel, the more you'll be able to answer questions that you both feel comfortable talking about. We do know that it's a major stressor on relationships, so communication, as I've said several times, is really important. Take time out together from the caregiving slash patient role. Make sure that you're taking time out to go on a date or stay in for a date. Take time out from cancer and focus on the things that you used to enjoy together. Even if that's simple because you're tired simply playing a card game or watching a movie together. Focus on the moments that can provide intimacy. Not necessarily sexual intimacy, but intimacy. Holding hands, laying in bed together, cuddling. It's also important that you encourage your partner to reach out for help too. Cancer can be overwhelming for both of you. And if he or she isn't talking to someone outside of you, he or she may feel really overwhelmed. So encourage each other to talk to people outside of your relationship, whether it's friends or family or a healthcare professional. I have so many people that support me and that makes a huge difference. I never was the type to ask for help, but since I've been diagnosed with cancer, I've realized that there is nothing wrong with asking for help and that people are more than happy to extend themselves. One of the things we often recommend is know your children and what kind of information they do and don't want. One of them may want to know all the details and the other may only want bits of information. The other important thing is just to promise them that you will tell them anytime there's a change so that they can go on with their daily lives and we encourage that to keep their lives as normal as possible. And if there's a change, if you get new information, that you'll keep them informed. The diagnosis of colon cancer and its treatments can have a pretty profound effect on your sexual function. It's going to be really important that you not only ask questions about how the treatments might impact sexual function, but also know that our emotional state, depression and anxiety, might also affect our sexual function. There are a lot of things that you can do to help improve your sexual function. Beyond just the use of medications that can be helpful, there are some things that the nurses and or the social workers can talk to you about to help improve your sexual side effects. Your cancer diagnosis does impact your emotional well-being. It also impacts your spiritual well-being. Some people have a crisis of faith. Some people become closer to their faith or their spirituality grows, sometimes is stretched or weakened. It's gonna be really important to seek out one of your religious leaders or any kind of support person in your life to help you explore the ways that you can enhance or work through any struggles or questions you may have about your spiritual life as you're going through and after treatment. Your emotional, sexual, and spiritual life are all very important to take care of, both during and after a cancer diagnosis. Seek out support, ask for help, get your family and friends involved in your care. With all of that help, 
You will get through this. Life will continue. And you will be able to find meaning and hope again.